What if I told you that I had the answer to reducing poverty, to closing the skills gap in the United States of America, to meeting the need of the aging baby boomer population retirement crisis that's coming upon corporate America, and creating an opportunity for more corporations to be socially responsible? Now what if I told you that the answer to all of those things is one and the same? I know what it is, and I do it every day for a living. You want to know what it is? I get kids high. Every chance that I get, every opportunity that I get, I look for an opportunity to give them the best high that they've ever accomplished. You don't believe me? Watch this. How you feel? Great. How you feel? Was it good? Hopefully. Okay. Do you want to do it again? Woo! That was what? Was it? Was amazing. Amazing? Yes. You got to play in the cockpit. How was that? I loved it. You loved it? Yes, ma'am. You really played the flight controls, huh? Oh, wow. Did your life change today? Yes, I loved it. Wow. Oh. I don't even know how to describe it. Wow. <laughs> So as you can see, I literally get kids high for a living. Let's talk about getting high. Dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin are probably the three most familiar brain chemicals that you guys have heard of. Dopamine deals with alertness, serotonin, satisfaction, but the sweet spot is the norepinephrine. That's for the people like me. Dopamine helps you stay alert. It helps you stay focused. It helps you get motivated to do work. It helps your memory recall. Serotonin actually helps you identify your flight or fight response. It actually helps you balance your emotions and deal with social emotional behavior issues. But the norepinephrine does something really different. It actually compels you to be active. It compels you to move. It gives you the strength and the determination that you need, and it allows you to pull that from within yourself. So to put it simply, the serotonin is your downer, the dopamine is your upper, and the norepinephrine is your hallucinogenics. So when there are chemical deficiencies in young brains, and I think 95% of teenagers have chemical deficiencies in their brains, we like to think the hyperactivity, the compulsion, that type of behavior is allowing them to act out to seek a new high. They go after high-risk behaviors to achieve that goal. In the minority community, a lot of people want to claim it on, uh, blame it on the lack of education or things like that. But to understand that most of the young people and the minorities that serve and work and live in this community operate at a high sense of alertness and awareness and trauma on a daily basis. So those high-risk behaviors going beyond what they already accomplish and achieve on a regular day drives them to, compel, to be compelled to high-risk behaviors such as actually doing drugs, being involved in gangs, robbery, and crime. But when you get kids high, you move over into the positive sphere where you actually redirect that exact same energy and compel kids to be motivated to get high on something that transforms their lives for the better. This is where you see peak performance and you're driving kids to be the best that they could actually be. The same kids that can't focus in school, that can't sit still, that are being diagnosed with ADD and ADHD. These are the three chemical imbalances that are strongly associated with those behavior disorders. So I wanna to propose to you four different ways that we can hack into getting kids high and I'll be a part of providing the solution. The first one is American failing academics. The second is the United States skills gap. The third is the baby boomer retirement crisis. And the fourth is corporate social responsibility. Now to look at this, we understand that the United States is currently ranking 20th in math, 20th in science, and 27th in math amongst developed nations. We know as a country, the United States can do better. Practical applications of classroom content is lacking. I have never used the algebra that I learned in high school, and I went on to have a successful career in aviation and aerospace. 
We were recently featured in Forbes magazine, and the title, as you can see, was America's Students Take Flight, How Innovative Education is Curing the Pilot Shortage. We believe that in our AeroStars after school programs, we engage students with the exact same content that we pay $30,000 a year to learn at the university, and they get a paycheck to do it. We believe that students can learn if you give them an opportunity to learn, and you give them the skills that they need to be successful. We were also featured on ABC, and they did a wonderful piece about how we are changing kids' lives through aviation and aerospace education. And as soon as I went to pull this link up on the internet to send it to a friend, the breaking news of the day was three teenagers shot on the south side of Chicago. This is the norm for kids in the community that I serve. The United States skills gap is more serious than I believe we want to recognize. 65% of today's primary school students will work in jobs that do not currently exist. When I was in elementary school, I didn't come home and say, Mom, I want to make cell phones. The only phone that I knew of was hanging on the kitchen wall with a curly cord attached to it. The jobs that are coming down the pipeline are going to take the next generation innovators to be able to pull this off. But only 90% of current schools offer computer technology classes. The skills gap is real. 9.1 million people unemployed in the United States of America, while 4.8 million jobs go unfilled. The only reason why they do not have those jobs is because they do not have the skills to fill the position. That's the only reason. Employers are feverishly looking for the right candidate. And with everyone having master's degrees, bachelor's degrees, associate's degrees, they have absolutely no skills no licenses, no certifications, and no credentials. Aerostar is aiming to change that. The baby boomer bus is here. If you know anything about the United States history, then you know that during World War II, after the war was over, all of the fraternizing that happened when the soldiers came back home produced a population larger than the United States of America has ever seen at one time. To give you an example, it's like putting a basketball into a water hose and watching that population move down the line. Well now, in 2012, the first baby boomers have just begun retiring. 40% of leadership in corporate America will be retiring in the next 15 to 20 years. 23% of the highly skilled trained workforce will be walking out the door in the next 15 to 20 years. Does America have time to wait to train up the next generation professionals? I don't think so. The Boeing company alone forecasts 1.5 million pilots and technicians by 2035. This number at first glance would seem impossible to reach. But with innovation and forward thinkers like the Boeing company, we recently received a grant from Boeing in Chicago to start our first K-8 aviation and aerospace education program. And that leads me to my fourth point, which is corporate social responsibility. The days are long past where corporations should write big checks just to buy a banquet table, or write big checks just for headline sponsorship at an international conference. I am asking corporations to write big checks and invest time and staff to train up their future employees. It's time for corporations to take social responsibility in the education, in the academics, and the certification and skills that industry needs in order to be successful and viable into the future. In the midst of corporate gains, you see here some of the biggest margins in the history of some of the top aerospace companies in the world. We believe they have an opportunity to invest. When employers want you to have 10 years worth of work experience with 22 years old, this is what it looks like. But you know what? This is what we're doing. Through Aerostar and our partnerships, we are now training young people as early as kindergarten and exposing them as early as pre-K to careers in aviation and aerospace. And we know that through our Boeing partnership and the Talent Pipeline Development Project, we hope more companies take notice in, in, in developing the next generation of aviation professionals from kindergarten to career. Because Talent Pipeline Development is the only way to save the economic viability of the United States of America and beyond. I want to share with you a little story. 
about me. Growing up in Maywood, Illinois, was tough. I'm the third of seven children, and let my father tell it in his so you're gonna marry my daughter speech to my then future husband, I was the worst one. I was a terror. School was easy, but life was hard. Growing up in poverty, violence. I completely understand the climate of today's youth in Chicago. One day I found myself in the back of a police car after a huge fight, and I clearly heard a voice say to me, it doesn't matter how smart you are now, does it? Weeks later, my mom, I think she knew that I was chasing this high, and she wanted to get me high. My mom wanted to get me high. She told me to get up early one Saturday morning and go take an airplane ride with the Chicago area Tuskegee Airmen. I showed up at the airport, it's a beautiful day. I saw all of these guys giving kids airplane rides. It was my turn and the pilot took me up and he asked me, you wanna take control? Now he didn't know how crazy I was. I said, absolutely. I took control of the aircraft, we turned it around and we were flying toward, flying over the skyline of Chicago. And then I said, I could do this for the rest of my life. That day, aviation saved me. I went on to graduate high school with a 4.2 GPA on a 4.0 scale, with 13 college credits to go with me to Southern Illinois University. I finished my aviation management degree, being one of only two aviation students in the aviation program out of 204 years, one of two African-American females. By the time I graduated elementary school, half of the young men that I went to grade school with were dead or in jail. By the time I graduated college, another 34 or 40 were in prison or in the graveyard. I went on to pursue my career in aviation and at 25 years old, I excelled greatly in the company. I had a corner office with a view. I had a house with a swimming pool in the backyard sitting on three quarters of acres of land. And I still was chasing that high. It never left. And so after a lot of thought, I decided that I was gonna start my own company and now Aerostar is one of the only female and African-American owned aviation companies in the world. We now dedicate our life to saving and changing lives through aviation and aerospace, but I still chase that high. That number set on the record board all day long as I hit 147 miles per hour in a Lamborghini on the Las Vegas Speedway. If you can find your pulse, then you can find your purpose. Billy Williams said that, but I say, what do you say to all of the parents who've lost a child to gun violence? This young man was boisterous, funny, hilarious. His eyes and smile lit up a room. This was his first airplane ride his sophomore year in high school. Three months after high school graduation, he was gunned down on the playground. This is my nephew, Joshua Holmes, dead at age 18. This young man, known him since he was in second grade, had a huge love and fascination for all things space and aviation. Our last trip together was to the Adler Planetarium where you see us there. He was shot in the head by a passenger in his own car. This young man was an avid aviator, education student. He had a huge promise ahead of him to have a career in aviation. Coming home from a store one night with Skittles in one hand and a soft drink in another, he was gunned down by a community law enforcement officer. This young man is Trayvon Martin. Don't tell me that the sky is the limit when there are footprints on the moon, wrote Paul Brent. Well, I'd like to compel you guys today to understand that now that we know the vastness of the universe, we also know that no opportunity has an end. The opportunities for our young people today are endless. This young man that you saw in the video was his first airplane ride at his freshman year in high school. He's now a licensed pilot, and he's still in high school at 18 years old, graduating in three weeks. We are really changing lives through aviation and aerospace education. So I want to ask you to help us pique the curiosity of the next generation. Will the one to lead us to interstellar space travel survive to live past age 21? Are we committed? to bring to bear the resources that we need to save lives through science, technology, engineering, and math? Will corporations be socially responsible and do the right thing to help train up the next generation of aviation professionals? I'd like you to help me. 
I'd like you to help us. I'd like you to help America get kids high. Thank you. Thank you.